Hey lovelies, you're welcome back to Reviews and Recaps. If you're new to this channel, I give reviews, I give commentary on reality TV shows and everything else in between. So let's get into a review and a recap of Ready to Love episode 11. So last week, the guys chose two people up for elimination, so Mercedes and Suan. And so Suan got eliminated. So everyone was like hugging her, trying to be like super supportive. And then you have Jeffrey in the confessionals talking about, every I know everyone is being supportive right now, but it's all BS. And I'm like, yeah. I actually agree with that because I've never really seen her interact with these people um, on the show to show that they have like such a good relationship. So the way everyone was acting, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure about that. So it's very much given faith. So then everyone is like in the kitchen, the ladies are cooking. So it's like Morgan and Cynthia are like cooking. And then you have Tony over on the other side talking about, yeah, she knows I love to eat. I'm like, dude, what is your problem? Like, don't think I forgot what you did last week, honey. And then she said, I think you missed out on a couple of whoopings when you were little. I'm like, yeah, you better, you better check him. Although I don't agree with um, the way she sort of corrects him. That's just not an approach that I would take. But I actually feel like someone needs to call him to order because he's out of order, honestly. So over on the other side, Cynthia was having a conversation with Andre. So Andre is like, yeah, put my feet on your, on my leg. I'm like, okay, all right. So Andre starts saying he likes thighs, he likes boobs, he likes all of that. I'm like, okay, Andre, all righty. So he starts asking Cynthia like what he think, what she thinks of him. And then so Cynthia is like, you have such a big heart and it was so easy that once you came back, you came back on top of my list. So they're over there just flirting and whatnot. And so Anthony was on the other side with Mercedes in the pool talking. And so Mercedes starts to tell him that she is intimidated by him. He has every like his whole life planned out and stuff. And she's intimidated and basically told him that they're not the right fit. I'm like, hmm, interesting. I appreciate that she didn't want to continue to lead him on. But I think it's been clear to us from day one that she's never really been into Anthony like that. It's just been like a backup connection, if I'm being honest. So I'm not surprised at all. So over on the other side, Lyndon is in the pool. Morgan has her feet in the pool and she's over there in his hair. I'm like, OK, Lyndon looks really happy. He was there smiling, closing his eyes. I'm like, all righty. So then Anthony and Cynthia decided to go have a conversation in the pool. So Anthony is in the pool. Cynthia is like sitting above him. And like they had this little cute thing going on. And so Anthony starts talking about like having conversations with his connections to know where he stands and whatnot. And then Cynthia starts saying, oh, something about, you know, don't let them be mad when they come to our wedding. I'm like, oh, wedding. Wedding. oh wedding like are we talking wedding he came out of the pool kissed her i was like okay all righty so i guess they have a stronger connection it seems so then blake was having a conversation with the guys basically letting them know that he would need to speak to tommy there's no point in him being here to distract what's going on i'm like yes blake leave thank you oh I've been waiting for you to leave since the first episode. So now it's time. Thank you. Bye bye. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. So then everyone is in the kitchen. Like the ladies are cooking. So Jeffrey's there cooking and whatnot. And then Tony is like, oh, Blake will be leaving. Jeffrey, how do you feel about it? Jeffrey's like, I'm handling some heat right now. <laughs> I'm like, she does not care. Leave that woman alone, please. So then there was this knock on the door. It was like, gah, 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 gah. I'm like, okay, is that the popo? Like, what's going on? So Tommy delivers a parcel. Someone delivers a parcel from Tommy, basically telling everyone to make candles for their connections. So they all divided into like groups to make the candles. So Jeffrey, Tony, and Anthony were making a candle and um, we're making their candles together and you could see Tony over there Tony messed it up bro but to be honest Tony I'm with you I'm not sure how well I would do at that if you were like put together a wardrobe it's definitely a no for me I won't be able to do that but candles I can try and see what happens but I'm not really sure I can't promise that it will all go smoothly but it will end up looking like a candle okay so then Morgan walks in in that badass dress. She looks amazing. And that body is just, oh, mm, 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 mm. she knows she's fine. That, and that, that's just that. So she walks into the pool room 
um, Lyndon is there playing pole. So they start having a very honest conversation. And I think this is the first time I've actually seen Lyndon be as open about how he's feeling. So he told Morgan that he's feeling like, you know, he doesn't want to do this whole play for Morgan's heart or whatnot anymore. It's childish, which I completely agree. And then he starts talking about the fact that he felt like he didn't like the way Morgan treated him, that Morgan treated him like a child when the whole saga with Tony and Morgan was going on. And so Morgan was like, she doesn't know how to like set her affections and manage two people at the same time. And I completely agree. It's hard to do that, especially when you're feeling one person over the other. She's clearly feeling Tony. And so and so Lyndon is like, he's bad for you. She's like, um, Harry, I don't think he's bad for me. I'm like, girl, he is bad for you. What? Like, I'm surprised. What do you need to see from Tony to realize that he's bad for you? So then Morgan is like, you know, she's not making a decision just yet. And he was like, take your time. I'm like, okay, that's sweet. But Lyndon, I'm still side eyeing you because the way everything has gone it took two people to, for it to get to that point. So you and Tony are hella wrong. So I still don't believe whatever it is you're selling. I just think you're slightly better than Tony. That's it. So moving on, Morgan joined Cynthia and Mac Anthony, who were making candles already. And she was a ball of herself. She was like crying and really upset. I love how Cynthia wanted, just went straight to her and said, what's wrong? And then she was like, she's going to go inside and clean her eyes. And then she went in and Cynthia came to come and meet her I'm like yes I love one thing I love about ready to love is when I see the women interact and there is that love there there is that friendship there's that support there's nothing I love more and so then Morgan starts telling Cynthia that speaking to Lyndon and realizing that she hurt him is really upsetting but then on the other side Tony the conversations that they have what they both want are the same and then Cynthia is like, but is his actions matching what he's telling you? Which is a very good question. They are not. So then Cynthia is like, my thing is, I need to know and see how you treat me when you're mad. And that's something I completely agree with. If they treat you like the bottom of the barrel, then that's how they really feel about you, honey. Like, and that's how they're going to continue to treat you. It's going to come out in other things, even when they're not angry. So there's no point signing up for a life like that. That's a life of toxic behavior, a toxic relationship. Morgan, you're so beautiful. I don't want you to end up in this toxicity that I see happening with you and Tony. So then Mark Anthony tells Tony that he should like better check up on Morgan that she like burst into tears making the candle and then he's just there like oh, what's wrong with her? Oh my god, Tony is disgusting. I cannot stand his ass. So then he walks into the room with this negative Vera energy. You okay? And then she's like, "Yeah." And then he's like, "Really?" I'm like, "Bro, she is upset. You can see that she is crying. She is visibly upset. Is that the energy that you go and give her? What is your problem? I'm so angry. I'm really pissed. And Morgan, if you let this man treat you like this, you have a lot of growing up and healing to do, sis. Tony, Tony, Tony. So Tony was having a conversation with Andre. Andre was trying to tell him to chill the F out in a respectable way, right? So then he's like, you know, she's been in there for two hours crying over another man. How do you know she's crying over another man, sir? What is your problem? Why do you jump to conclusion? Here is the natural conclusion. You, you've jumped to a different country. Like, bro, what is your problem? And guys, am I the only one who feels the same way about Tony? Let me know in the comment section below. Like he is, I can't believe that I would rather have Blake than Tony in this moment. That is insane. What? So now that I've gathered my thoughts together and my anger together, let's talk about the pajama party. So everyone came in looking real cute. Jeffrey came in. She was like, I'm going to get this man at all costs, honey. She wore the sexy thing. I'm like, OK, I didn't understand the stockings, but OK. All right, cool. If you like it, I love it. So anyways, they start presenting their candles. Jeffrey gave Andre a candle called Biblical Husband. 
um, Mark Anthony gave Mercedes a candle and, and then talked about the fact that it's mango, it's sweet, just like her. I'm like, alrighty. And then Cynthia, hmm, Cynthia's own was like fire still. She's like, oh, you know, she made the candle purple. She added some coffee in it because she wants to wake up to Anthony. I'm like, oh, what? That's a way to actually say this is who you want. Like, Andre, bro, she don't want you no more, honey. So then Cynthia also gave another candle to Andre and then said, you know, I made it with Rose because I want to give you your flowers. Anthony was not having any of it. So did that mention that Tony didn't show up to this pajama thing? Anyways, Morgan looked like she was having a ball and the candle that Tony made for Morgan had a bug in it. I'm like, oh God, Tony, you couldn't even get a candle right, honey. You couldn't. Honestly, it looks like everyone had fun without Tony. They were dancing, they had a blast and then Tony was over on the other side snoring like an idiot. Sorry, I don't mean people that snore are idiots because sometimes I snore, right? But it's not that. It's just he annoys me right now. So yeah, I'm sorry. I guess Tony slept really well because he woke up the next morning and had a civil conversation with Morgan. So he's telling her about, so she's like, why should I choose you? And so he's like, you know, he's a provider, he's a protector he cares about her you know they have a spiritual connection all of that now it all sounds all well and good but then morgan you're a beautiful woman if he's acting like this just because another guy likes you when it's painfully obvious that you're not that into linden and he was acting like a crazy person what gives you the impression that he will act differently like uh morgan i feel like you're setting off you're setting yourself up for like some head headache and heartache in the future like i hope tony gets like therapy and gets the help that he needs because he definitely needs it and morgan too says you should go for your own counseling as well because if you're attracted to this level of toxicity and being like oh this man is crazy about me honey he is crazy and it ain't just about you you're a prize to him honey well blake eliminated himself um self-eliminated there ain't nothing to say about that i'm just glad he's gone thank you Anyway, Mark Anthony and Mercedes went on a chess date and then they were playing two truths and a lie. I actually quite like that. And I might be going on a date today. So maybe that's something I would bring up. That might be fun. Who knows? But anyways, back to back to Mercedes and Mark Anthony. So, of course, they played for a kiss or whatnot. Mark Anthony won. What I thought was interesting was in the confessionals, Mercedes was saying like she feels like she solidified her relationship with Mark Anthony. And then Mark Anthony was like, yes, you know, he feels like he's getting closer to Mercedes, but also he's also still being pulled to Jeffrey. I'm like, what is going on? Jeffrey, what is going on? Like you have that pull that keeps them coming for more or what? Like what's going on? Or perhaps he's trying to play the game so that he can stay until the end. Mm, another angle. Which, what do you think it is? Do you think he's just trying to stay until the end? Or do you think he's really feeling Jeffrey? You know what is interesting? It feels like with Mark Anthony, he just sits back and then Mercedes then brings herself over each time. It almost feels like she's the one that is Ella into him and he's not. He's just going with the flow. He's a fun guy who gets along well with people. That's the impression I get. Let's see if it's the same for his connection with Jeffrey. Over on the other side, the ladies come in for like their dates with Tommy. Okay, for the eliminations. Yeah, so they start talking. Who are you not connecting with and who are you connecting with? Um. So in terms of who they're not connecting with, Cynthia actually says, Lyndon because she's tired of him being hurt and tony because she does not like how he's treated morgan and that it is important to see how a man treats a woman when he's when he's angry and i'm like cynthia you're completely correct i feel bad that like both of our connections might get eliminated but at the same time sis tony is a wild card so then Omi starts saying how many red flags have you got so then she's like his temper and she mentioned another one and then she said Lyndon also he works in the nightlife and has a lifestyle that doesn't quite fit well with hers. So then she starts going on about Lyndon and then Tommy is like you see how passionate you sound speaking about this man. 
And then she's like, yeah, but the heart wants what the heart wants. I'm like, your heart is attracted to toxicity. So we're not going by what your heart wants. So Tommy said that as far as her journey goes, that he's worried about her letting the flags fly, <laughs> the red flags, and her letting someone good go. That's the thing. I appreciate Tommy actually saying that because he never really gets involved as such in like their connections. But I'm happy he actually said that because <sighs> Morgan, I like you, sis, but no. Tommy basically told Morgan, you take Lyndon out, see if there's something there and you would be the one to make the final decision as to whether or not you feel like he's not ready to love. Tommy is like, protect your heart and lead with your head. I'm like, Tommy, can I have this on a t-shirt, please? Protect your heart and lead with your head. Like, honestly, Morgan, I don't know if you slept with Tony, but it is very much given that. And like, you're so heavily invested in a man that does not rate you. Like, you deserve so much more. I know it sounds like I'm so passionate about this and I can't stop talking about Tony, but I'm genuinely hurt for Morgan, honestly. She does not deserve, I know negate scenario and stuff. I just think, I don't think anyone deserves this level of treatment. Well then, Morgan and Lyndon went out to have a chat. So of course they start talking about how rough the weekend was. Lyndon made a few jokes about Tony and said that he felt like he was highly manipulative, which I completely agree with. Morgan is like, let's talk about us. Let me tell you what I need. I need a provider. I need a protector. And so Lyndon was like, do you feel like Tony is all of that? And she's like, yes. But let's not talk about him. Let's talk about me and you. Are you those things? You know what I need. Do you think that you would be the right person for me? And Lyndon said no. And I appreciate that because the truth of the matter is he is not. They most certainly don't want the same things. She wants to be married. He does not want to be married anytime soon. So I definitely appreciate Morgan for actually deciding that, you know what? Based on that, we're not a good fit. So Lyndon was like, should we hug it out? So he got up, hugged her, and then they kissed. And then he's like, it's been a long time coming. Tony will kill you. And then she's like, I don't care. I'm like, well done you. Well done you for doing what you want in that moment. And that was the end of the episode. So guys, did you see the preview for the next episode? It's about to be rough. It is family day. Someone from Andre's family said that Jeffrey having three kids was a liability. Let's see. I'm like, oh, oh, that will not go down well at all. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for the next episode. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Leave it in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already and make sure you subscribe and tap that bell for notifications so you know every single time that I post. And yeah, see you later.